Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is MC and make videos and blogs for international students who want to study, settle, and explore the opportunities here in Canada. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you hit that red button below and don't miss any videos I upload every single week. And also, if you're not part of the Esli mentorship group, I'm also conducting mentorship group with my Esli members. Also, I have school partners who are offering free application fee to get your letter of acceptance. So don't miss that offer, guys so check my description box so in today's video we're going to talk about Prince Edward Island so if you haven't checked the video here I talk about affordable schools here in Canada and one of the schools that I've mentioned there is Holland College so Holland College is located in PEI or Prince Edward Island so PEI is part of the Atlantic provinces here in Canada so you can check Holland College or University of PEI. So if you guys interested to go to Holland College or University of PEI, make sure that you hit that like button because I'm going to make a video in the upcoming weeks. However, I also receive a lot of questions about the living situation in PEI, what's the job opportunities, what's the weather like. So those questions we're going to answer that in this video. I have Joy Fajardo who is a vlogger as well. So she's living in PI right now so she's going to help us to answer all your doubts and and you will get some tips and things that you should know before moving to Prince Edward Island so if you're an aspiring international student who want to study and explore the opportunities in PI then keep on watching and to all MC's viewers. Um, I'm Joy Fajardo. Uh, me and my husband came from Philippines. I worked for two years in the financial industry uh, in an insurance company back uh, in 2012, I think. And then uh, we moved to Singapore. I worked there for five years as a marketing and sales in a retail store. And then we moved here in Canada just last October. So I'm pretty new here. It's just been about maybe seven months since we moved. Um, uh, basically, we tried moving here through Express Entry. We tried Student Pathway as well. Uh, we tried AIPP. And uh, finally, we were able to move in uh, using Provincial Nami Program. Our, our PR is still in process. So currently, we're still holding like work permits here. Uh, my husband found a job uh, be even before we moved here he found a job and that's the employer who supported us for AIPP but then the government or the province of PEI recommended that we move from AIPP to PNP because it's more suitable I'm not so sure exactly why but oh. that's what we think so yeah. yeah do you want to invite them to follow you on Facebook Instagram and YouTube you know yes I would love to <laughs> so I invite you guys to um, watch our YouTube vlogs uh, my YouTube channel is joy Fajardo that's f a j a r d o so we've been doing some vlogs uh, about PEI about migrating here and the current news uh, about PEI as well and also join us in our group uh, that Spinoy Canada Dreamer, hashtag Buhaisa Canada. We have a lot of members there that wants to migrate here so we can actually share our experiences and a lot of people are willing to help. Yep. And also, you can follow me on my Instagram, that's joyfjrd. So in this video, we're going to talk about uh, job opportunities in PEI and then we're going to talk about accommodation, transportation, and then we're also going to talk about the PR pathways. For everyone who wanted to go to PEI and live there. We posted some questions on our Facebook group and we're going to answer that today. So the first question that I received is about the accommodation in PEI. So Joy, can you tell me like how much roughly would be the accommodation if I'm like a student and I wanted to go to PEI Oh, like what's the best uh, place for student if I'm going to Holland College? Um, there's actually a lot of available accommodations uh, around Holland College as opposed to what we have been hearing. Like before we came here, we thought that, you know, it's very scarce. There's no housing. It's actually not true. There's a lot of housing. Mm -hmm. And if you need some help uh, finding one, you can actually just connect to me. Uh, we can connect you to our landlord. So it's like a group of 
housing, you know. So you're like an agent. <laughs> no, I'm not an agent, but a lot of because of what happened was when we came here, um, the Filipino community was really very awesome. Yeah. So they actually helped us find our accommodation. And from there, whenever there's someone who wants to come here in PEI, we just try and help them find their own because I think that's one of the biggest problem. Yes, uh, that's true. So, yeah, as for the cost, it, it actually depends on the exact location. Yeah. The cheapest one, I would say, would probably go around 700-ish kind of. Uh, is, that a, um, is that an apartment? or? Yes. How about the room? Because most students are looking for just one bedroom, you know? Um, for that, I'm not really very sure, but I would recommend that you just get like an apartment and just get maybe some roommates to fill yeah. in. Yes. The reason behind that is because we have tried renting a room. Uh -huh. It costs around $500 all in, uh -huh. but it is a room and we're trying to uh, like, um live with a different family uh -huh. and when you actually get your own apartment you'll just have to pay 785 dollars and that's two rooms so if you get another student so you'll actually save more so yeah. that's my recommendation that's what you call house hacking <laughs> <laughs> and what's good is, um most of the apartments here um the cost the 700 dollars that you're paying for yeah. already includes heat which is the most expensive i would say it includes heat and water yeah so you only have to pay for your electricity but that is the 700 is actually the base so it can go up until a thousand dollars plus it depends on the location mm -hmm. so it's just really a matter of really looking at what's available and yeah that's what i did in nova scotia we got up an apartment and then it was a three-bedroom apartment and then it was around 800. It's a three bedroom house. It's a house. It's Whoa. not an apartment. So a, for me, it's not advisable to get a house because we were paying a lot when it comes to the heating and we, we didn't have to pay for the water, but we had to pay for the electricity. And it was uh, expensive for us because we had to pay uh, around like an average 300 a month and that's too much that's because 800, 800 on top of that you have to pay for electricity and heating up a three bedroom it's too much you know so i guess i agree on that that you can just get an apartment get an apartment not a house and because how for the house it's hard to maintain everything so if you if you're just gonna live in an apartment the usually the electricity is free, water is free, and it's easy to get uh, another um, housemate that will help you to pay. You can just yeah. share. You don't have to make money out of it, but you know, just helping you to uh, share the cost will be beneficial. And in fact, there's there are already students here in PI who are looking for housemates, so yeah, it's even easier. Yeah. And also, it's advisable to get a, if, if I'm a student, uh, for example, I will be looking for another uh, housemate, which is a student as well. So you guys have the same schedule. What would be the recommended uh, places to live, like close by to uh, P, uh, Holland College? Because if I'm a student, I don't know where to find a house or something. Within Charlottetown itself, there's already a lot of good places. So say if the center of Charlottetown is right here, there's a lot of slightly further, but it's still within Charlottetown. Um, number two is Cornwall. Cornwall is slightly further. Mm -hmm. It's probably around 15 to 20 minutes drive, but the houses there are more cheap. Mm -hmm. I'd rather you stay in Charlottetown mm -hmm. because during winters, even driving might be tough. If you're going to go further away because you'll have to travel on a very open space yeah. which means that it's very hard to drive whenever it snows you cannot like you can just literally see the front of your mirror and that's it 
Like you cannot see beyond one foot of your car. So <laughs> it's very tough. Don't go far from the city if you are a student studying in Holland. Uh-huh. But after your PR and you wanted to move far away for farming or whatnot, you want a very simple life, by all means, you can do that. Okay. So now once you get your accommodation, uh, I think most students are concerned about the transportation. So because you know that uh, it's not like a city. Okay, so guys don't expect that uh, PI has a uh, <laughs> train. <laughs> you don't have a train. The metro <laughs> train or something that you can find in Toronto. If you're coming from Toronto, it's different in PI. So can you tell us what's in PI when it comes to transportation? There's nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> there is. There is, guys. Don't, don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> there is. So the only thing is that, um, again, it would depend on the location of your accommodation if there is a close like bus stop. But even if there is, um, like the timing of bus coming in and out of town, the intervals are quite long. It can be from 30 minutes to an hour. Mm-hmm. Plus, um, it has a specific time. Like, it only runs from 7 to 7, for example. I think it's the timing, but I'm not so sure. So, it can be from 7 to 7. So, after that, if you have classes in the, like in like at night, you, you, you don't have really, like, a, you have to get a cab. So, it's quite expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, whenever it's weekend or whenever it's holiday, there's no public transportation again you have to get to get a cab so i highly recommend that you get a car if you have the means or at least a bike that's another thing um um, there if it's like around spring to fall you can still use a bicycle Mm -hmm. only during winters then you'll have a problem Mm -hmm. so again i still highly recommend getting a car but Here's another thing I forgot to mention earlier. A lot of Filipinos here are very, very, very nice. Like they're willing to get you from one point to another. Yeah. So during your first or second month, don't be scared not to have a car as well. It's because you have Filipino friends here. Mm -hmm. They'll treat you like a family the first time they they saw you. So Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, the usual, uh, usual, um, uh, like a tradition in. Atlantic province. Uh, it's the same in Nova Scotia and the same in New Brunswick because I have a friend who's living in New Brunswick and she said that the Filipino community is just very welcoming, you know, which is good because in some cities like Toronto or here, even here in um, Victoria or Vancouver City, you can't, fi- it's hard to find that. Or they have like different tribes or something. So yeah, so well, that's good. Once I get my license, I'm gonna be your driver. So <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> but then you need to have a life insurance before it happens. So yeah. yeah, so for the transportation, so you're suggesting to buy a car. So how much is the uh okay, if I'm gonna buy a car, how much is the car? How much it's gonna cost me in terms of insurance and the gas? um if you get a car like okay for the gas it depends on the car there are cars that are very gas efficient like for us we actually have a civic Mm -hmm. um we're only paying like 40 bucks for almost a month because it's pretty good yeah it's it's just a small like city you just have to go from school to home school to um or home to like a supermarket so it's very close so you only have to spend like 40 50 bucks a month but if you have a bad engine car like previously we had a ford we oh. spend bucks every week or every two weeks mm-hmm. so it's kind of expensive it depends on the car as for the insurance again it depends on the car previously we are and it depends if you already have the license the local license mm-hmm. if you have the international license from whichever country you're from you can still use it here, but your insurance will go up. Uh, we're paying for around 160 for like every month in six months, just because we don't have a local license. Oh. So yeah, it really depends on the license. It depends on the car, like the model. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a few things to consider. Yeah. I'd say 
cost of buying it uh, can range from maybe fifteen hundred up. Mm-hmm. So the fifteen hundred is like a second hand, third hand car. So it's just you know just to get started i know some of you guys are thinking oh why do i have to buy a car if i'm gonna live in toronto or maybe in vancouver i don't have to buy a car i can just live off it you know just um buy a ticket for buses or train but guys just i just want you to to realize that in pi even though you have to buy a car you're still gonna save a lot of money in terms of tuition fee. So if, for example, if Holland College is 8000 per year, and then just analyze it, if, if you're going to pay 8000 for your tuition fee, but in Toronto, yes, you can save money for your transportation, but how much is your tuition fee? If it's going to be 18000 I'd rather go to PEI and buy a car. And then I have, and own a car. <laughs> you have your car, you can go anywhere you want. Like, when we were in Nova Scotia, I never regret um, buying a car and learning how to drive, you know. And in PEI, I guess it's the same in Nova Scotia. Uh, there's nothing to do unless you drive somewhere, like like nice places. They're more on natural uh, landscape, right, in PEI. So I would highly suggest buy a car because you can use that going to work, getting a grocery, you will be more efficient, I believe. Yeah. And another alternative, I would say, if you really want to save, is lease a car. The difference is not really that much, but yeah, at least you save a bit, maybe just to get started. The next one that I got here is about part-time jobs. So most students are scared to go to PEI because they thought that there are no like jobs available for students, right? Or or for their partners, right? What do you think about the what are the in demand jobs in PI? I think that's the best question. Hmm. Okay, so <laughs> there's actually a range. There's a range. So most of the time it's actually on the blue colored line. So what I mean by that is, you know, um, restaurants like uh, food and beverage servers and that's very in demand especially during summer so if you're a student you can just go for a part-time in summer and the pay is very good the reason is because we're an island yeah a lot of cruises are docking here mm-hmm. of course not now because there's you know the pandemic but they say that whenever it's summer tourists are just everyone's just here in pei because yeah. it's a very good uh it's a very good island to be in during summer mm-hmm. so there's really a lot of like tourist attractions you can definitely work there most of the time as i've mentioned it's food and beverage but besides that on a regular basis there's always hiring for factory workers Mm -hmm. it can be for seafood it can be for manufacturing because um we are very rich in natural resources and seafoods we have a lot of um seafoods here (laughs) mussel yes name it all those uh, types of uh, like seafoods are here so we're processing them we're manufacturing them to be exported so there's definitely a very high demand of work in that front so if you have a husband coming with you definitely you can have them um, work on those uh, jobs Um, healthcare healthcare there's a very high demand for um, I'm not so sure if this are nurses, but you know, um, healthcare aids. I think that's what you yeah, call it. It's, uh, yeah, healthcare aid. It's uh, I think in PI in Atlantic Province they call it continuing CCA, continuing care aid. Yeah. So um, because we have a lot of homes here, um, so definitely it's something that you can uh, go and those homes they not only um, hire med- like medical field students, yeah. they can also hire for their kitchen yeah. or for their front desk, for their back end admin jobs. So it's very good to come here in PI. There's a lot of job. So yeah. it's just a matter of if those jobs can actually help you become a PR or it's a job that can get you by on your daily expenses. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I think like for students, like if you're starting off uh, in Canada, you like when I came here, my job, uh, my first job was in in the restaurant. So I think for students, that's the usual job. How about other industry? Let's say um, farming industry. Is there a farming industry in PI? Like, yes, it's actually very good. Good thing that you actually bring this up. Um, PI has a lot of potato farms. Yeah, so that's number one. They're well known and comes to um, producing dairy products, right? Mm -hmm. I believe in PI, they also have like um, vineyards, like winery. Do they have that? I think it's brewery, but uh, oh, okay. I haven't heard any Filipino working in there as of yet. It's really more. Could say something. <laughs> potatoes, no. <laughs> yeah, I told you. We really have a lot of potatoes. I'm not sure, but in in uh, Nova Scotia, I we work. Felix and I we work in a vineyard. If it's like summer, it's like picking or something i don't know if pi has that like strawberry picking or do, do you guys have that i am not I hearing a lot of it you're not doing that most filipinos <laughs> are doing that <laughs> i haven't heard probably because of the covid we haven't we haven't oh, done it yet yeah, 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 but Farming, definitely. There's a lot of Filipinos, but the only thing is that if you're a student and you want to work in a farm, I don't think it's advisable. It's because it's very far from Holland. Holland is really in the heart of the city. Farming is way, way like you have to travel like two hours to go to Summerside, Tignit. It's way like far. <laughs> the next question would be, I guess, the PR pathways. Since we're talking about the jobs now. So mm -hmm. let's say we're family and I'm a student and then my husband has an open working for me. So what would be the PR pathways for that kind of setting for family? What's good about Atlantic, not only PEI, is that we have the AIPP, Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. So while you're studying, your husband can try to find a designated employer mm -hmm. who can support your application for PR. And mm -hmm. AIPP is actually the fastest, the easiest way to become yeah. a PR. While you're still studying, your husband found a designated employer. In a matter of six months, you can, you can be a PR. So yeah. even before you finish your first year, you can be a PR already. Mm -hmm. So that is what's good. That's the first. The second is, of course, uh, going for express entry or going for a provincial nominee. And also there's a critical workers training. So there's actually um, AIP, uh, no, Atlantic, PEI and all the Atlantic, Atlantic provinces are not yet that saturated. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of pathways to accommodate people who wants to become a PR. Mm -hmm. That's why um not only students from other country but also students from within canada are yeah. transferring here in PI to get their prs here so yeah. pi is definitely an advantage not only pi atlantic in general yeah. it's a very good place to yeah and so i guess like when it comes to permanent residency regardless if it's like aipp pnp uh you will get your permanent residency in PEI it's yeah. it's a piece of cake I guess it's yes. not, not like if you're going to compare it in Toronto or in Vancouver you will find it hard like in my experience it's hard because they have different standards and there are a lot of com a competition so if you're like if you're let's say you're working experience is in a in, uh, food industry or healthcare i would highly suggest go to be uh, like once you're working in a restaurant or healthcare um industry that's your stepping stone right to get your permanent residency you're building that relationship with your employer and then what i like about small provinces it's not it's not like it's like who you know or something uh, if someone recommends you that's really good it's a good thing 
just a very side comment about that. When we arrived here, my husband lost his job. Yeah. He got his second job because of a referral. The moment he lost his job, he got three offers because of three referrals from Filipinos. Yeah. That's why it's very important to connect with uh, uh, Filipino communities. And yes. then once you're here in Canada, you do the same, right? You help other people too. It's like a cycle. So for Filipinos, I think that's really, uh, it's a good tradition, right? I think, yeah, so we cover everything, part-time job, accommodation, transportation, and PR. So I just have a really, really, um, maybe quick advice for all people that wanted to immigrate through uh, through PI. You know, if you're eyeing to go to PI and get a PR, please, guys, if you wanted to do that, just stay in PI for a while. You know, enjoy living in PI. Don't just go there just to get the PR or something. Stay there, you know, for a year or two. It's not bad living in PI. Or maybe you wanted to just live there permanently, right? It's not a bad province. And then if you wanted to to move to different province, let's say Toronto or BC, then you can do that after a few years because, you know, we wanted to keep the program uh, and also you you wanted to keep that, um, what I call that, like, um, so you, we wanted to keep that credibility that uh, we're going to PI because we want to give back to, to, the province who give who gave you the PR, right? It's just give and take. <laughs> yeah. And another thing to add in there is that, of course, as Filipinos, we're going to be tagged. I mean, I mean, whatever your nationality is, you'll be tagged based on what your co-countrymen do. Uh -huh. So if your countrymen always do something that's transferring from one province to another, mm -hmm. you'll be tagged as that. And what will happen is employers won't want to hire your countrymen because yeah. of habit. So yeah. I've been hearing a lot of like nationality. When they hear it, when the employer hear it, they will say, no, I won't hire them because they will just transfer. Yeah. So you don't want to give that bad reputation to your country. So I wouldn't really recommend transferring straight away. So, yeah. Yeah, so, the, yeah, you're right. It's going to affect the future applicants to, you know, aspiring immigrants, you know. So, guys, don't do that. But thank you, Joy, for joining us today. And thank you for sharing your story here in my channel. And I'm pretty sure next time I'm going to be uh, your guest. <laughs> so you, you will be you will follow, be. follow her her youtube channel and facebook if you guys interested to go to pi you should contact joy and watch her videos it's all about pi right even if yeah. you're not from the philippines you can just watch her videos he, uh, she has some uh, english videos but you're going to change it soon so <laughs> I've got a lot of um, Filipino vlogs, but do expect more of the English vlogs soon. Yeah, to help other uh, aspiring international students or immigrants from other parts of the world, not just our own nationality, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So I hope you guys find that video helpful. If you like it, make sure that you hit that like button below and make more videos about PEI. And don't forget to follow Joy Pardo on her YouTube channel and Instagram account. So next week, I'm going to talk about Selkirk College, which is one of the affordable schools here in British Columbia. So guys, I'll see you next week and I'll see you to the next one.